A major hurdle is cleared for the Jacksonville Jaguars to remain in Jacksonville for 30 years with a new stadium. I'll tell you why that clears up some stuff and then just brings on more stuff. We'll do that today and talk about the schedule release here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is your team every day. I am the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, Tony Wiggins. And while it's your team every day, we also thank you for making us your first listen. That's right. Here on Locked On Jaguars, make sure you slide over to the YouTube page, hit the like button, subscribe button, and then hit the bell so you get notifications each and every time we drop an episode. And then this is very important. Wherever you get your audio podcast, whatever platform that is, make sure that you are getting your episodes every single day and you don't miss an episode. Make sure you check in. Make sure Locked On Jaguars is going to pop up. Now, if you're not, let me know. Somebody let me know today that there was a problem, man. I found out that it's something that's getting worked on. So we will continue to work on that for you. But let me know. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. What up, everydayers? I'm glad you're here with me. Thanks for joining me every day. You can be an everyday or two. If you're not one, all you got to do is join us every single day. All right, so let's get to it. Here's where we're going to end up. We're going to end up talking about travel days ahead for everyone that wants to go on the road with the Jaguars this year. I think I'm going to do it too. Last year, I couldn't because I had surgery. This year, I think I'm going. Where are your destinations? If your destinations are Miami and Las Vegas, congratulations. That's going to be your destination that everybody was going regardless of what week they were going to play them. I heard they may be opening against, open up against the Dolphins. We'll see because we're going to talk about schedule leaks in segment number dos. Well, it's two, right? But now we're going to talk about something that is very important this is about where the jaguars are going to be playing not this year we know where they're going to be playing not the next few years we knew that they were going to be playing somewhere and we still don't know where but the jaguars were able to work out with the city of jacksonville a 1.4 billion dollar deal some people say it's even more than that but the basics are it's 1.4 billion dollars where a little bit more uh, about 700,000 of that 770 some odd thousand of that is going to come uh, from the city of Jacksonville, and the rest of it will be paid by the Jacksonville Jaguars, which is like what about six hundred thousand, or somewhere thereabouts. And then there's some tax incentives and some other things for certain neighborhoods, especially the neighborhoods that are around the stadium. And uh, of course, I- I'll be remiss if I didn't tell you. Of course, you're going to be already getting the um, the the tweets and and the messages about folks why do teams do this and why do te- every team does it all right i know some of y'all you know think that football ain't that important and you're right but here's all i'm telling you that money they're giving that football team they wasn't giving to you and nobody else for nothing else that was just for that so we can talk all day about why they're doing it but i think it's a hurdle that needed to be clear before we can talk about anything down the line and the reason why if you're not a jaguar fan or a person that listens to the jaguar podcast all the time let me tell you why because ever since Shaq khan took the team over and talked about having an international presence because he has soccer teams and bumpers and he has international business going on in london and he figured out it was a way for his jaguars to sort of shrink that advantage that other people had ever since he started doing that folks have been swearing up and down the jaguars are gonna move to london london was even the second home and it was by design the jaguars actually promoted that stuff shout out to london we ain't got no problem with it the jaguars are gonna play two games over there this year one is a road team and one is a home team it has increased revenue. I think back in the day, the number was 11%. 11% of the total revenue was from one game in London. That's one game out of 16 that they had back in the day when they started this. And it accounted for 11% of their uh, revenue. That's good. Especially when the Jaguars, so all of you national people, let me tell you what the Jaguars struggle with. They didn't struggle with people buying tickets. I know y'all saw those tarps back in the day and thought they just don't sell tickets in Jacksonville. No, that stadium actually, back the way it was, held almost 80,000 people. 
And that would mean like one out of every 10 people back in the day would have had to go to a game in order for that state. And this ain't Green Bay. There's a lot to do here. You know, we got beaches. Shout out to Green Bay. I'm not knocking them either. But all, all I'm saying is people judge Jacksonville based on the fact that I heard so many people saying, well, Lambeau, the entire Green Bay, Wisconsin totally shuts down when the Packers are playing. And I just was like, what else are they going to do? We can go to the beach. We can go golfing. We can do a whole bunch of stuff around here, right? We can be hungover from the day before when college football played because there were SEC fanatics and ACC fanatics around here. So there's a lot of reasons people cannot go to game. But that wasn't it. The, what, what it was was it was the, the sponsorships from Fortune 500 companies that lacked here for a long time. So they decreased the size of the stadium, the capacity of the stadium, to a reasonable number in the 60s. And guess what? Tarps went away, and they ain't been around in uh, probably a decade. But people still remember that stuff and think they're moving, they're moving, they're moving, they're moving. They're not moving. They may play too many games away from here, considering they got a new uh, stadium, but they're not moving. The stadium is going to be there. The city owns the stadium. That's that when they want to do monster trucks or Taylor Swift or Luke Combs. All that money goes to the city of Jacksonville, and they're going to be able to do a lot more stuff kickoff games, college football kickoffs, maybe even get involved in national championships. That is why it is important that if you're going to play this game, you're going to play it. If you're not going to play the game, then don't play it. But for me, this was a good thing for Jacksonville. This wasn't a bad thing. This is a good thing. Find a way to get things done. That's why I call it rendition to reality because we have seen so many different, I hope I got the right one on my thumbnail, but I think it is because it's the latest one, but we have seen so many renditions. We're talking about Lot J. We got all of these different renditions and of what that area was supposed to look like and none of them ever came into fruition and passed the vote. Now it has. Now, does that mean it's home free? The owners still have to approve the deal. The league meetings in October. Yeah, they're going to do it. Nobody gets to this point and the framework is all set up and then somebody goes, well, wait a minute. The people that usually do that are the people that actually got this thing done. So I do believe that there's a there's a big hurdle. A huge hurdle that has been uh, jumped over and conquered by the people uh, of the city of Jacksonville. And this started in the previous administration, but it was finished during this one and uh, previous administrations of the city council. Uh, it, it got done. It got done. Everybody came together. I'm sure nobody got everything that they wanted in the deal. But here's what's, here's what's going to happen. You have a state-of-the-art complex, a state-of-the-art. So what has to happen now? Let me get to this before I start talking about what they have. Once the owners approve it, which I think they're going to do, that's when the city of Jacksonville can then turn around and say, okay, now what else are we going to do with that complex? So there's some issues that have to be resolved. And some of those things that have to be resolved are – where will the Jaguars play? Where will they play while the stadium is being built? I'm going to move that. I was about to drink me something, but I think the ice is going to make noise in this microphone. So um, is it going to be in Gainesville, Orlando? Those are the two places. I think it's more likely to be Gainesville from what I heard. A slightly closer ride, but more congested traffic. But we'll see how that goes. And after they do all of that, where they're going to play, the other thing they got to come up with, they got to, there's a whole entertainment complex that has to be uh, ironed out, voted on, that I think they're working on now. But as soon as the owners say, yep, we're going to do that, then I think you'll see the rest of those plans come into fruition. And maybe in 2000, by the time 2028 comes, there's going to be a slow progress of fixing the stadium. I, the, the, here's the plans they talked about one you know they were going to fix one side fix the other try to still play the games here i think what they're going to do is just move everybody out of here get them out of here and play the game somewhere else get it as done as quickly as you can and come back home in 2028 and that entire area is going to be fixed and they're going to be going after a whole bunch of stuff that may help jacksonville now the truth is most stadiums never pay for themselves truly but we got to find other you either going to dance or you're not if you don't want to have an nfl team then you, you're just not going to be able to sustain uh if you don't want to have an nfl team fine but if you do want one you ain't going to change how they do business these people are going to do exactly what they do in other places and whenever the rules are the same like some states give money to teams to build stadiums that's not the case in the state of florida so teams will do what they have to do and they'll do it accordingly but 
if you're gonna get out and if you're gonna get out and play with these NFL people, you're gonna lay down too and you're gonna do some stuff that they you know they ask you to do. Like right? my man said, you're gonna you get out and lay down. Which one you want to do? Well, we decide we're gonna get out. So therefore, if you get out, you know that there's gonna be some stuff that goes on that you won't like. Now that we have gotten that out of the way, I'll tell you at the top of segment two why it probably won't stop people, especially like Jason, Jason Locking Locking for from talking. But then we can start looking at the schedule. We know who the teams are going to be. The actual schedule won't be released until later on this, this uh, tonight or this evening. But we will have enough. We know who the games are, and we've, we've been having enough stuff get out, like nationally televised games, um, Monday and Thursday night games. Enough stuff has been coming out that you know we can start trying to put stuff together a little bit, and it's fun to do it. But we're going to look at some of the usual suspects and the people on social media that are able to give us all of that information. We'll do all of that. We'll tighten it all up for you here today on Locked On Jaguars in just a moment. I got to let y'all know about FanDuel first, man. That's right. FanDuel is the absolute truth. The absolute truth. And it's time for you to get paid right now with FanDuel. All you got to do, man, is make sure that you head on over to FanDuel and sign up as a first-time user because the first-time users get paid. That's right. All you got to do, it's a winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL. All you got to do is new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 bet. You make a $5 bet and win anything, you're going to get, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets. And right now, the NBA and the NHL ain't none of that load management. It's winner take all, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a win of your own. Did you see those champion pedigree Denver Nuggets say, not yet, Minnesota? That's right. 150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, and player props and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Thank you all for joining me here again on Locked on Jaguars, where it's your team every day. We always thank you for making us your first listen here on Locked on Jaguars. There it is. There's my pretty face trying to get that pretty face to come back up. There you go. I call myself pretty. All right. So we've talked about the hurdle being clear with the stadium. That's a bugaboo that has been like hanging over this franchise for the last decade or close to it. It seems like a decade. Everybody talking about the Jags going to leave and the Jags ain't going nowhere. Now they're kind of running for cover a little bit and they're going, they're really looking at the deal, like trying to be like, oh, so they're going to play two games overseas. Mm. Don't even try to sit here in front and act like that's what you've been saying. Lock and four and anybody else that has had this narrative that the Jaguars were going to be the team that the National Football League actually took and moved overseas when people here locally were telling you, that's not going to happen. Sometimes folks can consider local people homers. And they say that as an insult, as if local people aren't supposed to be homers. If I'm local, I'm supposed to be a homer. If I do a podcast directed and, and to talk about one specific team to one specific group of fans in their audience, uh, that kind of makes me a homer by nature. So calling somebody a homer who's probably supposed to be one to a certain extent. Now, I am an objective homer. So it's not the kill shot you think it is, right? Sometimes, though, folks on the national level, and I'll be honest and I'll say it, they think you're peasants when you're local people, and how dare you not listen to me? I'm the all-knowing this guy with this credential and with this, and you're supposed to listen to me and listen to me. All right, so my thing is, is I'm the dude that is crawling around in the building sometimes, too. I could do it two or three times a week, but I don't have time most of the time. So my thing is, is I got people over there, though. I got other people in the media that are crawling around there. We exchange ideas all the time. And if I know it's going to be something big or something good, I'll stop what I'm doing and run down there in a second. So you're in the building. You're talking to the players. You talk to the coaches when you have the rare opportunity to do it. The rare opportunity to speak to the GM or you talk to a bunch of people that talk to all of those people. Then you talk to the PR folks. And a lot of the things you hear is nothing like what these national people say. So sometimes I think what I hear is folks are just throwing stuff in the wind when someone asks them a question about 
if this is going to happen, who do you think it's going to be? <gasps> Jacksonville. That's what happens. Jacksonville. I remember the tarps. I remember this. I remember that. You probably wouldn't even remember your name if somebody didn't tell you, because the bottom line is sitting here telling people that are around the team every single day uh, that you know more about what happens with the team. That's the same thing that happens in another arena. The, the saying that you know about more about stuff than people that are actually here to me is laughable. And I wonder why people even pay attention to, to that stuff like that. I don't know why you even give credibility to stuff like that when you got local people, especially on Locked On, that are plugged into the team. And they're sitting there telling you, I told you a long time ago they weren't going nowhere. They're not going anywhere. I used to ask people, name this mystery metropolis that is just sitting out there, arms wide open, waiting for a team. And there ain't nobody else. Everybody's quick to bring up San Antonio. Good luck. Jerry Jones ain't letting it happen. St. Louis. Good luck. They lost their team twice. Oakland. <laughs> Good luck. They ain't got no money. And they lost their team two or three times in history. And they're about to lose their baseball team too. What are you talking about? Where's this metropolis at? What's that place Batman lives? Maybe that's it. Gotham City. Does Gotham City need a team? So that's why they always love to take it and without even looking at the ramifications, they want to stick a team they want to stick a team over in London because the, the league does want to have a European presence. But sticking one team and then deciding that it's going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars, in my opinion, has always been very, very lazy at the very least. Let's look at these opponents real quick and talk about some games that we may want to go to. Obviously, in the AFC South, what you have is – you got the, the opponents you're going to play twice, Tennessee, Houston, and the Colts. Don't know if anybody's going to any of those games. They might go to the Tennessee game, depending on when it is. But for the most part, for the most part, here's, um, for the most part, here, here's the deal. The games that we already know about, nobody's going to go to those division games very much. They might go to Tennessee if we feel like we're going. Every time we go up there, we lose. So, I, you know, I want to you know, maybe pause on that a little bit. Um, so far, what we do know, the two NFL Network games, October 13th and October 20th, versus the Bears versus the Patriots. One is a home game. One is an away game. I believe the, I believe the Bears is the home game and the – Patriots is the away game. If I'm not mistaken, the Bears is a home game and the Patriots is an away, is an away game. Uh, we'll just have to see about that one. But, yeah, that's the way it goes. No, yeah, the Bears – no, the Bears is the away game. The Patriots is the home game. Um, the rest of the games are to be, to be determined. There was some talk that Miami is the first game and then the, the uh, Las Vegas game would be very, very late in the year. We're going to talk destinations in just a second. I already know that those two places should have been high on everybody's list of destinations. I don't think nobody wants to go to Detroit. I'm here. That might be Thanksgiving. Um, we don't know. Definitely we'll know for a fact later on. But I'm going to discuss. I'm going to discuss the games and if when the game is scheduled decides where you go or now, obviously, you can't decide that you're going to go to two games and then you later find out that those games are back to back. You know, people can't do stuff like that. Well, some people can, but normal people can't. I'm going to get into it in just a second here in this third and final segment though. But if you're watching Fox sports and ESPN on your TV all day, have to turn down the volume with all the shouting, make the switch to locked on sports today, a free 24 seven sports streaming channel program for your every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming locked on sports today brings you can't miss analysis opinions and news streaming 24 7 on youtube or the free fire tv channels app part of the locked on podcast network your team every day let's talk about some traveling that we're all going to do when football season starts we'll do it in just a second here on locked on jaguar we're going to talk about game time today man listen let me explain something to you how many times have you heard this foolishness your procrastination is not 
a reason for me to consider this an emergency. You hear that from a lot of people. You won't hear that from game time because game time love when you wait to the last minute procrastinate. Sometimes it's not procrastinate. When you want to go to events, like right now, I was just talking about the schedule release. A lot of people want to go to games. They know where cities they want to go to, but they don't know when those games will be scheduled. And you have to get with your job to make sure that you can do it. All of that stuff. Game time is just sitting there waiting on you. Handle your business. Slow down. Take a deep breath. Take your time. And here's what's going to happen. Once the schedule comes out, you can wait till the last minute. Game time is going to be right there for you. That's right. Because that's exactly what they do. They specialize in flash deals, zone deals, all in pricing, seat views, the lowest price guarantee, and game time ticket coverage just in case something happens. Take the time and the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on NFL, L O C K E D O N. NFL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Shout out to everybody joining us here for the third and final segment on Locked On Jaguars. Where it's your team every day, talking about the big hurdle that was cleared with the stadium deal getting done. One point four billion schedule leaks. People leaking out that you know, they might open up against Miami. We're going to talk about that in just a second. If you got any travel plans, all right. And now travel days ahead. Bowl City Brigade is already working on their stuff. You got to get with uh, Bowl City Cap and that crew to find out exactly what's going on. What I what I did here today was this. I heard the people who were already inaugural members of grandfather in uh, since last year, the members of the BCB will have certain discounts offered to you first. It'll be first come, first serve, right? Um, but everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome to join the trips. I'm thinking what I'm hearing right now is Vegas and Miami. It's like we kind of knew that. We, and I'm not saying that to, to be facetious against uh, the BCB. But, yeah, when I when I sit there and look and I'm thinking, like, okay, what games we want to go to? That's one. Though That's two. Miami and Philly. I wouldn't mind going to Philly. The last time everybody went to Philly, though, it rained up there. But the, Philly is a good time. Go up there a day early. Go hang out um, at the, at, you know, at their little Xfinity Live thing. That's pretty good. Um, the Jets are at home. The Titans are at home. Uh, Minnesota's at home. Tennessee, of course, is both home and uh, Nissan Stadium. Uh, the Colts are both home and Lucas Oil. Houston is both home and NRG. Then you have some fun games, uh, Buffalo. Someone told me that that might be a Monday night game. Maybe. Detroit is a real good game. Both of those are on the road. Those are fun opportunities, depending on when the weather, what the weather is going to be at those times. But at least you'll see an entertaining game with some really, really good players. And then be able to visit a city, hopefully, like I said, if the weather holds up, you can visit a city that you probably haven't been to if you haven't been to one of those places. Green Bay's at home. Cleveland's at home. Of course, we know Chicago and New England are both – one's a home game, one's a road game, but they're both on the road. So, obviously, it, without even knowing when and where the games will be – well, where the games will be played and, and at what point, when, from a month standpoint, Las Vegas and Houston were no – I mean, Las Vegas and Miami were no-brainers. I would guess that if someone else wants to – if you want to travel a lot, then the next two would probably be, in my opinion – uh houston and philly and then depending on if it's nostalgic enough for you to want to go uh, from a competitive standpoint buffalo and detroit are also very good places to go so i pretty much just told you that, that where you need to go is every single road game that the jaguars play this year because there's something for everyone now seriously i'm not going to be able to pick a wins and losses i gotta wait till training camp comes wait to see what kind of late additions they make see how the the temperature and the, you know what the thermostat says the temperature and the vibe of the organization is at that time before i start getting into picking how many games they're going to win plus i gotta go out and put my eyes on them in training camp and i gotta see i gotta see some stuff it, you know i got tricked last year not really tricked because they were only two or three games off from where i thought and they played two or three games that they could have won last year but I really, really have to go watch them and see what the mood is around the team. In 2017, I saw something different. 
I saw something different again in 2022. In 2023, I saw what I saw in 22, but I was wondering how much better they had gotten because I thought that they kind of played the lullaby music that you play when the kid is in the crib and you kind of put your own kids to sleep a little bit. And it turns out that they probably did that when you look back in retrospect. But we won't look back too much because that means too much finger pointing. And when you start finger pointing, that means making excuses. And when you start making excuses, that means talking about people that are no longer here. And that creates the situation where the people who are still here are not held accountable. And that is not what we want to happen. I want to see something new. I want to see. I don't mind if guys get chippy. I don't mind if guys call each other out a little bit and say, "Nah, bro, we need to tighten this up a little bit and say we. Act like you're from France and say we. Don't say him or him or him. And don't say, well, I'm doing my job. Remember Jalen used to say stuff, well, hey, I ain't get burned. I covered my man. And how it came across like he wasn't a great leader. And I'm sure he probably didn't care. But still, I'm still telling you that that's how you, you have to make sure you do things the correct way. You have to make sure. But if you're not going to do them the correct way, I'd rather have a dude that belly aches and whines and cries about it. Because at some point, that stuff has to get fixed. Because if it doesn't, it lingers and hangs around. I'd rather have that guy than have the company man that's always acting like everything's going to be all right and we're going to get some marshmallows. No, I want that dissenter and that troublemaker to make as much noise as he can. But if he does, he better be the one that's doing everything that he's supposed to do. Because if he's not, then it's going to look like finger pointing, which is what I just said. Before I can give out an assessment of what I think this team's record is going to be, I got to take a look at them. It's still football to me. I can't just do the on-paper stuff and the analytics and all of that. I got to really, really breathe and feel and go to camp and tell you and look at the team and tell you if I really, really see a playoff team. On paper, I think they're a lot better. Schematically, I think they're going to be a lot better. Like they could have kept the old staff and just say we're changing to this system and I would have said they're doing a lot better. So, that being said, I'm not pointing the finger at those people as much as I'm pointing the finger at what it is they're trying to do and what it is they're trying to get accomplished and what they're trying to run. Make sure you check us out here on Locked On Jaguars every single day. And Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. I had a rough week, man, but I got therapy from sitting here talking to y'all today. And I appreciate you guys joining us every single day here on Locked On Jaguars, making us your first listen because it's your team every day. And we'll see you tomorrow. What we're going to do is gonna keep taking looks at this roster, we're going to look at the definitive schedule, find out if the games that we said that we were going to go to are the ones that we will go to. And then we will take a little bit of crack at looking at the games and breaking it down into sections. Like last year, I told you all that tough section that they were going to have. And that was the section that, that beat the Jaguar season up. And it started right there at the beginning of that third, uh, that third and fourth quarter. I think it was the third uh, part of uh, he broke the season in thirds it was that third it might have been a quadrant a little bit of that late third quadrant heard it early until the fourth quadrant somewhere around week 11 through like 16 17 things just went kind of crazy so i'm gonna uh, take a look at the schedule tomorrow and see if they have any pitfalls uh, or pitfalls shaking up like pitfalls pitfalls shaking up that way all right we'll take uh take it one day at a time here on lockdown jaguars you do the same y'all take care of each other and we'll see you next time